Hi everybody, it's Mrs. McPhail here. Today our learning target is I can write the quotient as a decimal. Before we get going, some term or a term I want you to remember is this word right here, quotient. This simply means the answer to a division problem, which is what we'll be doing today. Let's look at two examples today. One I want to do a money problem and then the second one I want to do is just a regular sharing problem. So our first problem we're going to look at today is the following. We have five friends that are sharing twelve cans of pop. Yum yum. I don't know about you but I was always a fan of Sprite, Coca-Cola. Um, maybe you have a favorite that you like. Maybe you're into Orange Crush or Mountain Dew. They're going to be sharing 12 cans of pop. So we could use our manipulatives to do this, but since we're using decimals today, um, hopefully you saw the last video where we used manipulatives to break it up into fractions um, as more of a visual. But today I just want to look at the algorithms for this. So this is division because we're sharing. And so let's set this up. We're sharing the 12 cans. So by the way, we're looking for how many cans each friend is going to get. So what we're sharing or what we're splitting up goes in the house and then our five friends, that's going to be our divisor. That's gonna go on the outside. Okay, so let's divide here. Five cannot go into one, but five can go into 12 and that can go in two times. So 2 times 5 is 10, do some subtraction, and we have 2 left over. Now this is the point in the past where you've either learned to write your quotient up here with a remainder of 2, we have 2 left over, or if you've previously watched the video on how to write the quotient as a fraction, you know that this now becomes, your remainder becomes your numerator, and your denominator becomes um, what we divided it by. Today we're going to work on decibels. So what that means is we want to get rid of any remainders. And how we do that is we're going to go ahead and add in a decimal point. Change my color here. And with the decimal point, we want to put it there and then we want to bring it straight up. And it is so important to keep really nice neat work here so that you don't lose track of your place values or your decimals. So after we write our decimal and we bring it straight up, we're going to write a zero here. This does not change the value of our original dividend because anytime we add a zero after a decimal point, it just means that there's no value. We're just continually trying to get more precise at our quotient. Now, we're just gonna treat this like a normal division problem. We're going to bring our zero down And our five is now going to be divided into 20, and that goes four times. So I'm gonna write my four right above that zero that I added. And you can see now my remainder is going to be zero, which means I'm done, I can stop. If you would have had a remainder still, you would have brought down another zero and then kept on going until you could get rid of any remainder. So our quotient to this problem, it turns out that each person is going to get two and four tenths of a can of pop. I hope they have fun trying to divvy, divvy up that last can of pop so that they each get four tenths. Let's look at one more problem. And this one's going to be a money related one because usually money already has decimals associated with it. So I wanna show you what happens when uh, you need to write your answer, your quotient as a decimal, but you already have a decimal in there. So let's say four friends share $10.50. How much does each get? So we're splitting this up. So this is going to live in the house in our, as our dividend. 
divisor goes on the outside. Notice that we already have a decimal in here. So if you're comfortable doing this, I like to do this right away so I don't forget to do it. I'm gonna bring my decimal point straight up so I don't forget about it in my answer. Four cannot go into one, but four can go into 10 two times. So two times four is eight. Be very careful lining that up. If we subtract here, we have to borrow, so we're gonna get two as a remainder. Now notice my decimal point is already here, and on the other side I told you that you had to write a zero, but that's because we didn't have anything else up here and we had to create some zeros to bring down. This time I still have numbers over here, so I'm merely just going to bring those numbers straight down one at a time here. So I'm gonna bring my five down. Four goes into 25 six times. Six times four is 24. And then the same thing here, I have a remainder. So I'm gonna bring my next number down. Four goes into 10 two times. Remainder of two. Now this time I still have a remainder, so I'm in a situation now where I'm trying to get rid of that. So now I do have to add a zero. However, I also have already had one decimal point in this problem, so I don't have to worry about adding any other decimal points. As long as there's just one decimal point, we're good to go. We don't add more than one decimal point. We can, however, keep adding zeros until we don't have any remainders. Once again, adding zeros after decimal points do not change, or does not change the value of a problem. Four goes into 25 times. So, each person will get the quotient is $2, roughly 62 cents, because no one really ever gives you 625 thousandths of a dollar. So, that would be the quotient or the answer to that division problem written as a decimal, our learning target for today.